Hi folks, Mike again from Hills and Hollers Homesteading and Prepping. And we'll go ahead and throw another video out for the day. Uh, Alright, so let's talk about nutrition and calories real quick. What do I need to store? What kind of foods do I need to look at for long term uh, storage for getting us through the day? Uh, you know, during a grid down event or during a time when we need to uh, depend on our food stores. And that is going to be, especially this time of year. Now, of course, if you're in your home and you've got uh, utilities and uh, everything's still working, you don't need as many calories. You're indoors, you're not active, we're assuming this, okay? So, you know, your typical daily average at calorie intake shouldn't change. Now, if you're in a situation where we're in a grid down event, electric goes off, natural gas goes off, and you've only got your home to depend on as your shelter and as your protection from the elements, you're going to require a few more calories and you're going to require a few more different calories. And what I mean by that is, is you're going to need more fat and you're going to need more protein. Now that doesn't mean you need a bar of Crisco or a jug of Crisco. That's the worst kind of stuff you could possibly eat. What you need is, is stuff like olives. You need animal fat. Uh, you need dairy, things like that if you can have it, um, like cheeses and stuff like that, uh, to help get the good fat that you're going to need, the quality fat that your body needs, to help you produce more heat and energy in a situation where you are outside of your normal activities and also depending on your calories to help you produce heat. Now, if you've ever watched... The show, the series on TV, I think it's on History Channel, uh, maybe it's on Discovery, I can't remember, called Alone, the survival show. They drop these guys off up somewhere in Canada on these lakes out in the wilderness and they have to depend on their own skills and stuff. They have to hunt and collect their own food and everything like that. Now they're foraging. They're definitely foraging. And they're foraging for whatever they can get before winter comes. And that's fine, but every single one of them, every single one of them requires, craves, and knows that they need fat. Even the guys who are getting rabbits every day, they know they need fat. That's why they're after fish. That's why they're after big game, to get that additional fat. And the reason for that is, is fat is going to be your most abundant source of calories the body's going to utilize fat way more efficiently and more appropriately than carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates we look at, typically, if you're going to forage carbohydrates, you're looking at your, your, your berries, okay? And berries tend to have a low sugar content anyway. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, things like that. Now, when you get into other fruits like apples and things, of course, they're going to have a higher sugar content, but... You're not going to pass up those berries if you run into them in a situation like that. And our ancestors didn't either. When you look back at the uh, the Ice Age person, the people, the hunter-gatherers, they were more hunters. They hunted a lot. They ate what they could gather and forage along the way on their hunting trips. And they weren't always successful in their hunting. So they did have to depend on what they could forage. Therefore, they were hunters and foragers, um, or hunters and gatherers. So... We're coming into winter now. Our little warm uh, episode seems to be over. It was 54 today, and it's already dropped down to 44 now. The wind's picked up. The rain seems to have stopped, and uh, we could possibly see some snow coming up. But we have all of our all of our utilities running. We have a wood stove with plenty of firewood. I've got it. I just got it started for the day, and uh, keep it going for the rest of the week as our main source of heat. So in the event that something would happen, that we would have another power outage like we had today, where we were, I think we were down for just about an hour and a half or so, it was right after I, I posted the last video, our power come back on. But we were running on generator power, home standby generator power, and we did fine. But like I said, in the event that something would happen where the electric would go off, yes, we still have our home standby generator. If we lose natural gas, we don't have that for us so we were, would depend on a wood heat and b all of our dry stores and our, our shelf stable stuff because i wouldn't want to go right to the freezers and everything like that and open those up you want to keep them closed as long as you possibly can to help retain the cold that's in them 
Now, if I know it's going to be days upon days and we have no natural gas or electricity, I can cycle my gasoline generator uh, until I run out of fuel on it for the freezers and refrigerators. But once that fuel's gone, and in the event that I don't have an, the ability to refuel to go to get to go to go to the gas station to get more fuel, then we're going to have to look at starting to preserve the foods that we have in the freezers and the refrigerators. So we're looking at more than likely we're going to be pressure canning, uh, and we'll be pressure canning on wood fires because we would have no natural gas, we would have no electricity, and yes, it can be done. And uh, Previous videos, you heard Emily talking about her grandma doing it on a big old, uh, outside on a fire with a big uh, galvanized tub. That's how she pressure canned. So, and she did it for, you pressure can for three hours in that instance because you don't have the uh, the luxury of the pressure canner itself. But if you put them in there and uh, put them on a the boil for three hours, that takes up the place of pressure canning. So that'll make your food safe, uh, your meat food safe like that. So, you know, that's just some things to think about do some good reading there's a youtube channel uh called food lies he's got a facebook page as well and start looking more into the 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 emerging science and and stuff that's coming out now there's a huge study being, or big study being done by harvard right now and that's very surprising i was actually very surprised to hear about that but they are actually doing a a really big study right now on a ketogenic type carnivore type diet with over 2,000 participants so a lot of good stuff coming out of that. Uh, anybody tells you it's not sustainable, they don't know because there's never been any long-term studies done on that. Uh, and it is absolutely 100% sustainable. So for our health, for our survival, for our nutrition, especially in a situation with a grid down event um, where we have to depend on our food stores, I want my calories to come from as much protein and fat as I can get and very little, if any, grains I definitely don't want grains, not what they do to me. Um, and, you know, even flour, like bread and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to have to depend on that because I'm going to be miserable throughout my existence until things return to normal if they would ever do that. Um, and I'm not somebody who thinks we're going to be facing a, an end of the world event. I mean, honest to goodness, if it's an end of the world event, what the hell are we wasting our time for? Um, we're just prolonging the inevitable at that point. <coughs> so... Uh, good calories, good protein, good fats. Look them up. Do your research. Do your research. Do not be swayed by the vegan movement. Do not be swayed by the plant-based movement. Those people are wrong. They're going to create a whole bunch of health problems for you in the long term because they really don't have a lot to go off and just about everything that they practice and preach can be debunked. Um, and that is with emerging science. But they're fighting it tooth and nail. So get on it. Do your research. Pack your food stores appropriately, calorie-wise and macronutrient-wise. You can keep some carbohydrates, some rice and beans. I even have rice and beans. But they'll be towards the end of, of, of my supply that I would go for when needed. So, but because my my kids, because I have kids, you know, I they, they eat carb-heavy, as most kids do. And I'm trying to kind of get them away from that a little bit, little by little, because you don't want to turn turn the tables on kids all at once but uh for now i do have carb heavy they do have mac and cheese they do have you know dry cereals and there is flavored oats and there's cocoa wheats and there's sugars stored down there and stuff like that so you know in a pinch it's going to keep them alive in the long term it's not something i would want to be dependent on for my survival i want that protein i want those fats uh to keep me healthy keep my strength up and uh, keep things going so that's it i walked out to Tend to the chickens and stuff, and I come up here to the building to get a couple things to take in the house because I want to doodle around a little bit. So, folks, please, on the YouTube channel here, give us a like. Leave us a thumbs up. That's the like button. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Give me some of my ideas. Give me some feedback on what you think. I know my videos suck. I can't help it. I'm, it's just me. That's, how, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get anything flashy. You're not going to get a bunch of music and stuff in the background unless I'm playing it, and that's what you're going to get. So leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Subscribe to our channel if you're like-minded and you enjoy the content. Let me know. Take care. Keep prepping. And God bless.